Work hard for what you want in life. You work hard for what you want in life. That, that, that your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're gonna do. That your word is your bond, and you do what you say. You what you that you treat people with dignity and respect. That you treat, 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 treat people with respect. Reach of your dream and your willingness to work hard. The strength of your dream and your willingness to work for them. Work hard. Work hard. Work hard. Work hard. Work hard. Hey guys, I'm Tatum. And it's your girl Milan. And welcome to episode 11. 11. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of the Black Girl Boss Podcast. Ooh-hoo. So last week, y'all really enjoyed our conversation about the Forbes article, which is pretty much about uh, what Black women millionaires do differently. Mm-hmm. And now before we even got into the actual Forbes article, we spent some time talking about Sophia Omaroso and her lack of inclusion of Black women in her girl boss brand. So I was reading, I was on um, entrepreneur.com. So I read a lot of their articles on there a lot. And so ironically, I came across this article. It's called Four Takeaways from the Rise and Fall of Nasty Gal. And this was actually written a few days ago. So this must have been fate (laughs) because this article was literally written on March 1st. And we just talked about this last week. So this article, I didn't even know all of this was going on with Sophia because I don't really follow her like that. Mm-hmm. But she filed for bankruptcy recently. Did you know that? Yeah. Remember, I kind of mentioned it. I think it was on the episode. I said, I think the nasty girl was filing for bankruptcy. But I did hear it because somebody was telling me, girl, you need to go in there and get some outfits. So they got a sale going on because they going out of business. <laughs> so that's actually how I heard about it. But I didn't look too deep into it to figure out as of why they were going out of business. Mm-hmm. So apparently... And this is so crazy, though. And it had me thinking because the whole Girl Boss book was about how she started from humble beginnings and created this Mm -hmm. empire. So I'm trying to figure out what happened. (laughs) What happened to the decline of the empire? Like, what happened? How did it go from you being on top and you having all of these um, investors and people reaching out to you and you being like the face of black women? I mean, whew. That's a lot. Ooh, that was deep. The face of women. <laughs> so we talk about black women so much. I'm messing it up. But the face of women entrepreneurs. So it's like, how? How right. did how did you fall? Like we leave it in the article, they're like, you, we hear about rags to riches story, but you don't never hear about the rags to riches and back to rags. rags. Like how did they played that? in this article. Yes, this article was so shady. If y'all want to check it out, we're gonna put it in the description, the link in the description, but it's called Four takeaways from the rise and fall of Nasty Gal, and it's by Steve Toback. I think he might be a hater though, just because he's a guy. But the way he was coming for her was unnecessary. Yeah, ending part, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so in his article, he talks about how Sophia Moroso used eBay to, and we all read this in her book, mm-hmm. to grow an eighty-five million online business, eighty-five million dollars, excuse me, online business. And so then she filed for bankruptcy and then now ended up selling to Boohoo.com for $20 million. And I'm surprised she sold it to Boohoo. I would have probably thought misguided more so than Boohoo. Yeah, that I don't really... seems... Boohoo's kind of cheap. Yeah, Boohoo's quality. They, yeah. The way they look, even on their presentation online looks mm-hmm. cheap, you know, so I would have thought more so misguided, but... Well, Boo Whatever. must be doing something good with the business because they just bought uh, Nasty Gal. For 20 mil. And it, this sounds so funny because you would think for us, it's like, what? I would kill for $20 billion. But if you think about her story, the difference of 85 to $20 million is, it's nothing. that's a crazy drop. Yeah, so she may still be a millionaire, but that's like a ridiculous drop. And so um, Sophia has all this other stuff going on. Of course, she's turned Girl Boston to be this whole empire with like this Netflix show coming out. And I'm really interested to see how that goes now. Yeah. Because if it's supposed to be a, a show about you know girl boss then you gotta cover this part girl so that's true (laughs) i'm just trying to see how that pans out but anyway so this article talks about the takeaways so that's Mm -hmm. what i like about it i don't really want to sit around and 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 try to make light of anybody's situation because she's still winning right you know everybody makes mistakes or everybody has unfortunate circumstances so by no means do i think that her filing for bankruptcy takes away from who she is or what she's been able to do because she built an $85 million business. Now you might've made a mistake that caused you to take a step back, but 
who can say they built an $85 million business and who can say they, that they sold anything for $20 million, yeah, whether it was a 32. loss or not. Huh? Only being 32. And she's 32. She got the rest of her life. But anyway, so the first one is, the first takeaway is cash is king. The author says that as with so many founders, Omaroso had a knack for everything about her business, except for the business itself. After raising venture, venture, the, the, God, y'all, I can't talk today. After raising venture capital, she moved the company into a lavish LA headquarters, opened two brick and mortar stores, leased a dedicated distribution center, and spent a fortune on marketing. He said that's an enormous leap and burn rate for a startup that didn't have enough of a track record to prove its business bo- business model was sustainable at scale. That's interesting. And he said, when funds began to dry up, so did the company's marketing. Sales took a dive, cash flow went south. And that, my friends, is what you call a death spiral. He is so rude. <laughs> <laughs> he did not care. So how you how do you feel about that? It's it's like you can say, Wow, that's so remarkable. Like she did all of that so fast and then but it sounds like it was no plan behind it. Like mm-hmm. we kind of discussed prior to getting on the show. Everything she seems to put her hand and her foot in growing up, it was like, wow, I got this idea. I'm going to hit it and run, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to go. And then it's like she ran out of fuel. Right. And then she kind of got stuck. And once you got stuck and she had nothing else, then that's when everything happened. So it's it's admirable that she took such a leap, opened the headquarters, opened, you know, two of the stores, opened, you know, whatever she did. That's great. Mm -hmm. But you can't say that if you have no plan behind it. So it's like. Or no business model, because the money should have went into something else else that referred that, you know, revolved around making sure that she could keep that type Mm -hmm. of momentum. But even in the even in her book, she was just talking about how she really enjoyed the styling and putting the pictures up on eBay and Mm -hmm. um, it just took off. And I think that was her whole that was how nasty I was from the start till today. It just took off. She had no control over it. it And I think that's the biggest lesson of it. She had no control over the business. So so when you have a a sustainable business model and when you have if when you understand the business and you have control over, you can predict certain things. So your business is going to take off. But you know how like if you're walking a dog and he just start running (laughs) Running. and he just dragging your ass wherever (laughs) he's going, it's different. You actually have control. So you're guiding the dog, so to speak, or you're guiding the business and um, you're leading it somewhere that you know is going because you understand the business and the model and Absolutely. how you're going to scale. So yeah, I thought this was interesting. It. Yeah, she didn't have a clear eye after that. It was just the that hype of the moment. And mm-hmm. then once that hype kind of started settling, it was like, mm-hmm. now what? And then, like you said, she wasn't investing in the right places. So she was putting money out, putting money out, putting money right. out instead of investing and strategically planning that marketing strategy mm-hmm. that she did for so long. And now we're here. That is so crazy. I, I think this is like a, a prime example of when luck runs out. Yeah. <laughs> because How she obviously you have? was just lucky and her luck ran out and the, the true flaws of the business mm-hmm. started to show it. So but I think that goes for like outside of that and, you know, for our businesses too, because I felt like you management and I told you in that first year, it was like, pew. Mm-hmm. So when coming into year two, I'm like, whoa. I got to step back a second because I right. didn't envision it to happen so fast. Mm-hmm. So luckily mm-hmm. I had a, you know, a sound mind that I could step back and not, you know, step out of my own, what is it? My rocket and do something crazy. Right. I was able to pull it back together and then restructure myself, but it happened so fast. Right. And that's why I was telling you, we was talking um, after the episode last week, it's like, okay, you have all these clients, mm-hmm. so what is it going to take for you to leave your job? Because mm-hmm. it don't make sense if you have all of these clients and you still need a nine to five. So where's the problem coming in at? Mm-hmm. That's a that's like a, a flashing red light. Something has to change. You know, we talked about it and you have all these great things that's going to be coming out soon to to show that what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. But I think that's that's good, though, because you're able to pay attention to the process right now. Right. And I don't think that she had that opportunity because her her takeoff process was like an eight year eighty five million dollar thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was like, so oh. she didn't have no time to sit down because it just went nuts. Yeah. And she never had to do anything differently. So I think that that's a really good point. So the next one is if you want to be a CEO, you have to love your job. Guys, 
if you want to be a CEO, you have to love your job. And when I, when they say love your job, they mean love your job as the CEO, mm -hmm. <laughs> not love, love the, making the product, the brand, the, the idea of it. You have to love being in charge of mm -hmm. whomever and how many ever people and all the responsibilities the that come along with that. So he said it takes razor focus and tenacity to meet the continuing challenges of a growing business. If you don't love your work, you will not stick with it. The book, the podcast, the TV show were all Omarosos taking her eye off the ball because she didn't enjoy what she was doing. She eventually stepped down as CEO, but too late. The damage was done. Uh, he quotes her when she says uh, she told Forbes, I didn't love hanging having eight people reporting to me and asking me over and over if we're hitting targets. She said, I'm a creative, I'm a brand builder, I'm a rainmaker, I'm a pretty good marketer, but that's not something I want to do every day. If the company had a tombstone, that's what would be on it. <laughs> she just she killed wrong. her company. She did. She just killed her own company. Like, what? <laughs> That's crazy to me, though. How do you feel about that? Like stepping down this 32 years old, stepping down the CEO to now let somebody have your company at 32. I think it's commendable that she was able to recognize that because I, I could only imagine, and I know ego is not good, but we all have ego. Mm -hmm. We all have pride. I can only imagine the type of hit that took to, and the type of courage it took to be like, I can't. I am not what's best for the company that I built. That's crazy. That kind of reminds me of the intern when um, they were trying to get her to sell her company or have somebody in charge of the company. Mm -hmm. And she was like battling back and forth with herself and she found herself crying and, mm -hmm. you know, not wanting to know what to do because she didn't have enough time to spend her family. Her husband mm -hmm. ended up cheating on her. You know, it was kind of like her, you saw her emotion go through that emotional roller coaster. So I can only imagine, you know, her being in the same. Because if you think about it, in the intern, her company was an online company that grew. What's that? That's a movie? Mm -hmm, the intern. I've never seen that. You have to see it. It has, um, what is her name? Princess Diaries Girl. Poor Devil Wars Prada. Okay. Uh huh. Her. Mm -hmm. She's the lead character in that. And something. And Hathaway. And Anna Hathaway. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Her. So she's in it. Yes. So that's, it's kind of reminds me of that because they were trying to convince her to sell her company to somebody else, let somebody else be in charge. Right. But she's like, this is my baby. Like, how do I do that? So yeah. that ego tripping is like, mm -hmm. how do you let somebody tell you now <sighs> what's going to happen to something that you created? And you know, even this, the guy who wrote this article was like, the damage was done by the time she stepped down. And he kind of making it seem, I think this is a very snarky <laughs> written article, but he's kind of making it seem like she took all that time. But I think that's what took the most time to really have to check yourself yeah. to know that you're not what's best in the role as CEO because okay. she's still there. Um, but in the role of CEO for your company, I couldn't imagine. Because you can be the founder. Yeah. And I think people fail to realize the difference between founder, CEO, president, and mm -hmm. then everybody else after that. Right. It's okay to be the founder. You still mm -hmm. get as much money. You still get all the credit. Right. You just have to take that leadership role and just... That's be the because you're it. the ultimate boss so to speak that you have is your customer yeah and if what you provided isn't giving the customer what well actually i don't think what she i don't think she wasn't giving the customer what they needed i just think she wasn't doing the executive part right because mm -hmm. i'm assuming i'm sure nasty gals customers are happy i mean that's probably why boohoo bought it because she still has customers i think that there won't be there wouldn't be a nasty gal eventually if she didn't step down and that will eventually yeah, affect right. the customer because they won't have this brand that they have been so attached to Absolutely. but oh my god i couldn't imagine maybe because we're in like service-based businesses so it's different we are right. emotionally attached to what we do because we directly help people and we can see that but my gosh like I'd be crying every single day. For real? Like, <laughs> I'd, probably make the decision. I'd probably wake up crying, go to sleep crying, be in the shower crying. It's crying. Oh my gosh. I thought that was crazy. But this takeaway is really important, you guys. You have to make sure you love that job as a CEO. Yeah, because if you don't. You have to make the decisions for the company. Not the just the fun decisions. stuff. Exactly, the best decisions. Not just the fun stuff. Not just the pretty things. Not just the bright, shiny objects like Raven was talking about when mm -hmm. she was here. But you have to make those really, really tough strategic decisions and be able to handle if they don't work out. Yeah. That's, man. That's an everyday thing. It's every day. You don't get to take a break from being a CEO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she And I like how she pointed out 
she's a creative, she's a brand builder, she's a pretty good marketer, but that's not something she wants to do every day. Mm -hmm. So she stepped back and realized what her strengths was. And, and I think that's something that we should all do now as we're starting businesses or us who've been in our businesses for um, a little bit of time now is really figure out what our strengths are what our weaknesses are and how can we bring people on our team Absolutely. that compensate for those weaknesses so that we can grow. Yeah. So when you started your company, what were some of the weaknesses that you realized you had and what were your strengths too? My weaknesses. Um, I think I've said this before and it's still a weakness that I have is trusting others. Like mm -hmm. as far as my interns and stuff, and then right. I have a chief operating officer um, to really get the job done and the tasks that they, you know, I need them to do. Um, so for example, I could say I need to have this media kit done by Wednesday or mm -hmm. something like that. It'll probably be done Monday night. Right. So it's like, you know, know how to delegate and not carrying so much of a load. And that can hinder you at the end of the day because you're taking everything and right. holding on your back and you're going to miss something. You're either going to miss something, you're going to work, you're going to overwork yourself or you're just going to not pay attention to a client. You know, you're not going to get the same clients, the same type of balance that they all need. So I think that was one of my biggest weaknesses and a strength of mine um, was knowing how to be a leader. Right. Like I can give them, you know, the encouragement and the, and the vision and have them see everything. Cause the leader, you're supposed to have others see your vision. That's mm -hmm. the, the one of the main things you're supposed to be able to do. Right. Um, but that came from being in previous leadership roles. So that was always kind of like my strength. Well, can you be the, a leader without trust though? Yeah, you can. You just have to be willing. That's the thing, the willingness. I think mm -hmm. that people lack trust and they, they lack willingness. I'm willing to give them stuff, mm -hmm. but my, I guess the trust part is trusting them to get it done quickly like I need it. Right. That's the part it is, the the trusting them they're going to get it done. I know they're going to get it done eventually, but me, my mind, I move so fast. So mm -hmm. I'm like, they're not going to get it done as soon as I need them to get it done. Mm -hmm. And they may have it done on Tuesday instead right. of Wednesday. But my mind is like, no, now, now, now. Right. And so, yeah, it's the trusting them to get it done quickly. I trust them to do the work and do a phenomenal job on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. The quickness of it, ah, but, you know, I move <laughs> fast. I'm right. like... Right. The speed of light. So that's mm -hmm. kind of like my thing um, with them. And it still is. I'm like my chief operating officer the other day, he was just like, okay, you want it done now, but I'm getting it done. I'm making the calls and this, that, and the third. He's like, so if you want to help, help. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so it was kind of like that thing. But um, yeah, leading them, that's why a lot of them join because they're like, you're a great leader. You make, you make it very easy to work with you. You know, mm -hmm. you just have to learn to relax and mm -hmm. let us get the task done. Um, like you want it done and when you need it done. So it's a work in progress, but I feel you. I think I'm, as you was talking, I'm trying to think, I think my biggest strength is strategy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm a, I'm the type of person when I hear problem, my brain goes straight to solution. Mm -hmm. I always see there's, I always say like, there's two types of people in this world. They're the people who spill milk, they're so upset that the uh, the the milk is spilled. They want to know why the milk was spilled. They are so <laughs> devastated that, that this, this milk, milk was, spilled. was spilled, and they just want to know, like, well, what's up with the milk? Like, what did I do wrong? Is the milk mad at me? I'd be <laughs> like, man, I don't spend my time doing that. The milk spilled. I cleaned it up. I'm gonna think for a second why it spilled, so I don't have to spill it again, and I'm automatically on to the next thing. <laughs> I cannot sit there this and want and yeah, right the example. <laughs> I can't sit there and like ponder on things right. that don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how I work. Problem straight to solution. And so that can be both a strength and a weakness. It's I think that it can be a weakness because it makes it hard for me sometimes to empathize with others who, mm -hmm. who cry over spilled milk, so to speak, because I don't understand. Like, why would you want to cry over the spilled milk? <laughs> like, me and my boyfriend argue about this a lot because he's he's the type of person where he wants to find the meaning in everything. He's logical. I don't, I, I, I call him abstract. I call him a unicorn <laughs> because it's like it's like he won't cry over the spilled milk, mm -hmm. but he will want to he will want to know like. <laughs> what is the meaning that this milk spilled and how does that apply to I'm like what are you talking about yeah not, not enough gravity at the time so, exactly so let it float and hold itself like was there no gravity so that's why it fell yeah we're on earth there is and, I, and, I'm, and I'm grabbing the, the paper towels and cleaned it up while he talking about that's all of that funny. and I'm like we going to the next thing what are you talking about so that's definitely a weakness but the strength in that is like 
I'm able to find solutions. Okay. And I can, I can, I'm very strategic. So I could look. So if you bring a business to me and you say, like, with, like the example we just used with you, and you say, I'm going to quit my job this year. And I'm saying, well, you have all these clients. Why aren't you able to do it now? And then you're saying, well, this XYZ is the reason. I'm like, okay, so now you need to do XYZ to compensate mm-hmm. for the XYZ. That's the problem. Like, mm-hmm. it's, so, it's so easy for me to find uh, appropriate solutions to almost anything. And it's almost amazing to me how I'm able to do it. Mm. But that's just a strength that I have. And I think that's what makes me um, a good marketer. And that's probably why I like marketing so much Mm -hmm. because marketing is all about driving those sales. And it's about figuring out the best way to get people (laughs) to buy and do what it is that you want them to do. So those that's definitely a strength and another weakness of mine is similar to you like it's hard for me to trust people to do stuff Mm -hmm. it's just like i would have already gotten this done in the time that i'm teaching you how to do it but at the same time realizing that it's like okay you have to take the time to build that team because once you build that team and they are able to, and they're committed to, the, to your company, um, they're committed to the vision and you're committed to see them drive and see them succeed. Mm-hmm. You just, I think it's, it's rewarding mm-hmm. because now they're grown as individuals and now your company is getting, right. is getting farther and you're able to delegate stuff and um allocate your time better to your actual strengths right. while the other people do that so i think is i think because as an entrepreneur especially as young entrepreneurs like us it's a constant learning process right. we're learning ourselves as people as women we're in our 20s like right. we're going to change a lot yeah, you know absolutely. so we're learning ourselves as women we're learning ourselves as entrepreneurs we're learning other people as individuals we're learning other people as professionals and so mm-hmm. i think that It's really a a growing process. And the most important thing, like we talk about a lot, is being present in that process. Because if you're able to recognize those things Uh pre uh, $85 million (laughs) bankruptcy, like before that, then then that's how you avoid getting to that point. So let's go to the next to the next point. He said the the author of the article says starting is easy. Scaling is hard. Mark Zuckerberg may be Facebook's product visionary, but the company's ability to execute flawlessly at scale is the work of Sheryl Sandberg, who Zuck recruited. I love how they call him Zuck. (laughs) Who Zuck Zuck. (laughs) Who Zuck recruited early on as his chief operating officer. I'm not sure if the social network would have flopped like MySpace, if not for Sandberg, but she is responsible for its stellar growth. We all have weaknesses, but a CEO must have enough self-awareness, like we just said, to recognize that and hire a talented executive team and trust them. <laughs> he didn't say that. I added that and okay, trust them part. Added them, y'all. <laughs> Don't listen to her. <laughs> That's for both me and you. <laughs> to hire a talented executive team with complementary skills. That's what it takes to effectively scale a business. Had Omaroso done that, and so here you go with the shade, instead of essentially abandoning ship, I doubt if her team would have left her, would have let her make the poor decision she made. What is wrong with this guy? He's just not feeling her and her decisions. <laughs> <So> <laughs> he is just is thinks that she should just, just st- stick it out and have some balls. I, I, I want to Google him, see what the hell he's doing since he's so daggone critical. Yeah, like, I agree. Like, I know that my team is talented and they have wonderful skills. Like, I'm never taking that away from them. Like, like mm-hmm. I said, I know I can give them stuff, mm-hmm. but my mind, I move fast. Yeah. So me trusting you to get it done faster than me is not there. Yeah, and I think <laughs> the problem, well, not necessarily the problem, but the situation with us is, like, we started these things from scratch. Yeah. This isn't like a... a what is the word? A franchise where somebody hands you over a business and you run it. Or mm-hmm. this isn't like network marketing where they you sell, you basically still work for them. You just have more freedom, but then they hand you over the model. This is something you start from scratch, mm-hmm. like from ground zero. Literally a sticky note and <laughs> yeah. late night. So you post this stuff everywhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it, together. It's hard to let that go. It's just like a baby. Like just how moms have a hard time taking their child to a daycare Mm -hmm. they need that team so they can free up their time to go and do things but it's hard to hand that hand that over Mm -hmm. and i think it's the same thing with us as entrepreneurs it's hard 
to hand that over. We recognize it, but it's a work in progress. That's kind of like when somebody suggests you change something about your baby, mm -hmm. like your company. Like mm -hmm. it could be my, I know me and my mom went back and forth about me changing the logo up. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, this is what you management started with. And this, that. I'm like, but we're not 12 years down the line. Right. <laughs> I'm not even at my one year mark. I can change this and it makes no difference mm -hmm. to anybody, mm -hmm. you know, but it was just it, the logo to me was cute when I you know it was like oh yes I love this but as you see the vision you know you think 10 years from now 20 years from mm -hmm. now do I still see this logo mm -hmm. being the forefront of high NPR right no mm -hmm. so I took that route and I just changed it but it was like her telling me no you need to leave it I'm like who are you to tell me <laughs> that this thing that I have birthed you're uh, you are the grandmother <laughs> not the mother, mother mom right you are not the mother so how dare you tell me that I can't take her hair and put it in a bun uh-huh <laughs> And it came out of me. <laughs> That's how I got it from. So I definitely, you know, I, I understand Sophia in this moment of, you know, it's, yeah. it was her decision. Nobody forced her into doing it. She made it because she knew that was the best decision for her baby. Right. So he need to shut up and I know. stop pissing me off. <laughs> I know. And I think that, I mean, we're both in a part where, where we've started. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're at the point of scaling yet. We're still growing what we started. Yeah, I think so, once we become full-time entrepreneurs, yeah. then we'll kind of reach that moment where it's kind of like the scale mm -hmm. moment, but no, not right now. But now we're just being present. Cause I yeah. know when um, I have, uh, I sent out an email about this recently. When I started the Queen Academy, it was like, I knew I wanted to start this uh, development empire, like personal and professional development, mm -hmm. because I just feel like, personal development saved my life you know what I mean just Absolutely. being present and, and taking care of my character and the intangible things about who I am right. is the foundation of everything that who I've been able to come and who I am as a woman mm -hmm. and so when I started it I wanted to focus on that and I wanted to give back to the youth it was like I'm gonna start this I'm gonna start with the youth and I'm gonna do all this but then I had to realize the problem with that is and the things that I had to accept is I don't like dealing with parents all the time. I, I think that parents, I, I really cannot understand. And this was something that really got on my <laughs> nerves. A parent will literally buy, like I had these girls in my program. And one of the exercises we did in our financial literacy segment was we wrote down everything they spend money on. Mm -hmm. I could not understand how their mom was spending like $3,000 on them a piece a month based off everything they listened to, but had a hard time paying for a program, a mentoring program. And that, and, and luckily she did pay for it, but it was like a lot of parents don't want to invest in a character, the character development of their kids. Right. They want to spend money on all the Jordans and all the makeup the and all the clothes and all the Christmas gifts. And, but you want to leave it up to your child to decide if they want to be in a mentoring program or not. Let's be clear. No kid wants to be in a mentoring program. But what happens is when you get in it, that's when you like it. It's like, oh, I love Tatum. I love, you know, everything that we do in the Queen Academy. But if you just sell it, you can't sell it. You know, if they meet me, it's a wrap. They're going to want to be a part of my program because they'll be able to see everything I'm bringing to the table. But with the parent, you have to make that decision for them. So right. I never re would really understand how, as a parent, that was so hard for you. Right. And my program was not expensive at all. I didn't charge nearly what I should for the workshops that I did. Right. So that was another lesson. My pricing needed to yeah. change. But it was like, <laughs> why? I, didn't, I could not understand. So that was a part of it, trying to figure out how to implement more um, revenue streams because I could not rely on parents. I thought I thought that they cared about their kids. <laughs> they, <laughs> they don't that kids. much to invest in a mentoring program. And then in addition to that, working with schools, schools don't have the funding that they should mm -hmm. for uh, development programs, right. after school programs, sports and dance and stuff are easy sales. But when you, if it's something that's like up for the life skills and mm -hmm. things like that, that should actually be in the freaking school curriculum, but it's not. Those type of things, they don't have the money for that. So it's like, okay, I'm learning that target audience number two ain't got the cash. Right. Okay, so then working with, let's say, nonprofits or other large organizations that serve the you, they have, they're slow. They take a long time. You gotta wait for this, you gotta wait for that. It's red tape, oh, we like this, and then it's on hold, and then it's picked back up. like. That type of stuff don't pay the bills. Absolutely. So I couldn't rely on just the youth 
in that way, the way that I was doing it to build the Queen Academy empire to be what I wanted it to be. Right. And so that was a that was a, a reality check. I thought I just wanted to um, do what I was doing, but I couldn't, you I, know. So yeah. now it was like, all right, how do I imp- how do I remember why I started? How do I um, still do what I want to do for teens and for the youth? Mm-hmm. And how do I still build a sustainable business? And that's where a lot of other things come in, like the queening group and a lot of other stuff that's going to be happening and me um, understanding my skill as a business person and a marketer and offering that to small businesses and stuff. So there's a lot of things that's going to make up for that. And it's like, okay, cool. Now we can put together uh, free things for girls and put together camps and programs and things like that and not really rely on the people whose job is really to contribute to the development of these girls. And I can just do it myself based off of the others. So I think that was, I don't even know why I started talking about that, but I think that (laughs) that was a a revelation Mm -hmm. for me and business and being present and what that process was and understanding how I could use the talents that I have to do more. Yeah. And you raised a good point about remembering why you started. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people lose it early on Mm -hmm. on why they started. I mean, when I say early on, I don't mean like in the same year or in the next year, but like five years, they're like losing the sight of it. And I had to tell one of my clients that like, that's been in almost six years now. I'm like, you need to go back and self-reflect and remember why you started this company. Because right. I don't think you remember mm-hmm. at this point in time. Like, I don't think you know. And mm-hmm. I go, well, I know because this, that, and the third. Da, 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 da. Okay, so now what? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You don't remember. Go back. Right. <laughs> if you can't tell me exactly what now that you, after you didn't say, you know why you started, you don't know. You don't remember. Because when mm-hmm. you started, you had a whole everything. Is she product or service based? Um... Kind of service, but kind of product because they do both. Okay, yeah, okay. it's the kind of, but more so service than anything. Mm-hmm. More so service than anything, but yeah. So I definitely agree. You got to remember why you started. If you don't remember, you need to self reflect and go back to them for real and focus on your journey and mm-hmm. your business and not somebody else's journey in their business that may be doing yep. the same thing because you are two different companies. I was just telling Milan this before we cut the thing on, so I told y'all that. Um, I'm pursuing a marketing certification. And so I've always been a type anywhere, anywhere, the what? Anyway, to where if everybody's going left, I'm going right. I do not like doing what everybody else is doing at all. So when it came to like marketing and stuff like that, I noticed that a lot of women business owners, specifically, especially service based, are doing the exact same things. Everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's following the same formula. And I'm trying to figure out who came up with this formula and to me it's just somebody started doing it they started teaching others that person started teaching others and that person started teaching others and now everybody's doing the same thing and so that's why i think education is important and a reason why i wanted to get the certification because i wanted to go to the founding principles of what you're supposed to do and then i can apply my creativity and my specific niche to it so and so I'm pursuing the certification is for digital marketing specifically because it's technology world. Teach me about technology. I don't care about I care, but I want to be an expert in the digital stuff because that's where the world is going. And so in learning all of this stuff, I'm this whole time, y'all, I'm like studying and I'm like, oh, my God, I am going to make a killing teaching people how to do this because it's like. It's so much that we don't even know because we're too busy trying to do what everybody else is doing. Everybody else is doing. And we see the such and such is doing this. Oh, let me start doing that. Or we see such and such is doing this. And they're like, oh, well, I'm going to do this. But I'm going to change this and make it my own thing. Like, no. <laughs> what? It's so funny you just said that because I just thought about it. It's another PR agency and she's my soul. I'm not going to put the name out there, of course. Dog, when I say I swear like somebody like spies on both of us and just be like, even mm-hmm. tell her what because when I say we had the same we had the same business colors the mm-hmm. that coming out mm-hmm. we had this she just launched hers and mind you I had been talking about mine mm-hmm. but she you know I don't know her she doesn't know me you mm-hmm. don't know her so right nobody could have told her that it's the same we had the same exact platform the same exact concept 
it's just like really two different names and that's two weird different, i'm like how did that happen mm-hmm. and mind you i she just put it out there she never mentioned it before i have yet to mention it mm-hmm. so how did that it's just so weird but it goes back to we're two different type of what she's going to be able to present and what i'm going to present are two different things right mine's online hers is in class in right. her area that's already two different things mm-hmm. she's catering to the people of that state of that community mm-hmm Every, oh, people over here in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, they're not going to go out there. To right. even, you know, it's just so funny that we're talking about that because when I seen it, I'm like, who are you and why? <laughs> like when I say company colors, website mm-hmm. colors, I'm like, no, <laughs> this is not happening. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. But and that stuff happens. It, and that's the thing. It happens. It's just you never realize how close to home it'll be. Mm-hmm. That's why that million dollar message is so important because it's partic- it's specific to you and that unique selling proposition. Mm-hmm. We all have something special about what we do. But yeah, man, I can't wait till I get these little letters, you guys, because letters is in the certification because it's just going to be. I have so much I want to teach already because it's just like, if I just show y'all how to do this, y'all going to be blown away. And I'm already <laughs> going to do the stuff. In, and I've already done a lot of the things that I've learned um, in my own business. But y'all, I, I'm just going to stop right there. I cannot wait <laughs> until I finish this this certification because I'm really going to tell you guys a lot. It's going to be so dope. You better step it up, y'all. Yes, exactly. Okay, so the fourth point or the fourth takeaway from Sophia Omoroso's situation, according to Mr. Bitter, who wrote this article, (laughs) (laughs) he says success is not a goal. It's a way of life. It's telling that Boohoo.com only acquired the brand, the intellectual property, and not the inventory, the retail stores, or the fulfillment center. The British retailer or e-tailer may have found it around the same time as Nasty Gal, but co-founders Carol Kane and Mahmud Kamani have spent decades in retail. They know their business inside and out. Even so, they continue to hire talented and experienced executives and add industry heavyweights to their brand. These are entrepreneurs who love what they do, know how to run every aspect of their business, and are executing are executing, excuse me, well at scale. They're in it for the long haul. So there's a good chance they'll be successful over the long haul. And he gets even more of a bitter Betty in the last part. I've met countless (laughs) entrepreneurs over the years. So many just want to get in, make a quick million or two and get out. Always tell them the same thing. That's not how it works. Do they listen? Nope. Nope. (laughs) And you know what? It never works out for them because that's not how it works. (laughs) Who are you, (laughs) sir? That is my favorite part. My God. But if if they wanted to just make a million or two and get out, and that's That's what they did, then they won. Like, that's what they wanted to do. I don't understand. It's it's all about what you want for your business. You know what I mean? Like, who is he to tell them that's not how it works if it worked for them? Because if Sophia Amorosa was that person who she just wanted to come and make millions and, oh, and she, wow. it seems like she is the one that just wanted to do all the fun stuff and make money off of it, she won. And I think we're kind of, is it, so is she doing it for the whole girl boss brand or is she more so stepping down to some nasty girl? Because she's still girl. selling books. Nasty girl. She still has Netflix coming out. She still has a podcast. She's doing all the fun stuff. I think she might, I don't know who's the CEO of girl boss or if that falls under nasty girl, but she probably has other people running that, and she's just doing all the face-to-face, cute stuff, right. the fun stuff. I think that the whole, like, he's just really trying to make it seem like she's just not doing anything. That's mm-hmm. what he's doing. Really, she's doing stuff still. She's still making the money. Mm-hmm. Like, this still her. I, she's still the founder. The it's, Everything is still She hers. still built an $85 million business, and she <laughs> sold it for 20 So she still is going to make money. She still has all the girl ball stuff. Yes. She's still doing exactly what she That's wants right. to do. And she gave up what she doesn't want to do. Like, I just don't, he's so bitter. Well, while I may not like, you know, totally understand where Sophie is coming from. I respect her for what she's been able to accomplish and for what she's, her new journey is going to be based on her realization. I think that this whole story and this whole article has things that we can take away from it yeah. for our own businesses. I agree, 100%. This guy was just an asshole. <laughs> they me so mad, y'all. Because he was just doing too much because it was real substance in this article where he didn't have to do all the little snarky nonsense. Ugh. But anyway, let's take a break, and then we'll be back with questions. 
And we're back with questions. So if you guys want to send us a, a question to get answered on the podcast, send us a message on our Instagram. That's the best way. I know I usually give like five, but just do Instagram because it's the easiest. <laughs> so our Instagram is at Black Girl Bosses. So the first question comes from at Simply Unsimple. Oh, okay. Well, I would like to offer... <laughs> It, it threw me off. I was about to say simply unique, simply unsimple. Okay. I would like to offer a blog and service based business to online creative entrepreneurs. Other than the basics website, LLC theme, what tool services do you think new business owners should invest in? Is business coaching necessary, et cetera? One more time. That was a lot for me. Okay. I would like to offer a blog and service-based business to online creative entrepreneurs. Okay. Other than the basics, website, LLC theme, what tools or services do you think new business owners should invest in? And is business coaching necessary, et cetera? New things or other things that you should invest in besides the logo, website, the LLC, that's what she said, mm -hmm. trademark of that logo, um, of the name I, I think she mean like tools and services to help her business um hmm, let me ponder for a second say them <laughs> okay <laughs> um excuse me first I would say I wonder what she means by uh service-based business to online creative entrepreneurs I wish she would have went into more detail about what that means but first things first, if you want to have a service, you're going to have to talk to people at some point. So yeah. um, you're going to have to have sales calls. So something that I use for my discovery calls is Acuity Scheduling. It's either free or $10 a month. I don't really remember. But you're able to create your own little like schedule. It's an online scheduler. And so okay. you can say you work from this hour to this hour on these days. So you set your schedule is literally just the link. You can use that same link on everything. And then all you have to do on the back end is just keep updating your availability if anything changes. And people click on it and go to it and Yep. Okay. So people just click on it. They go straight there. They pick whatever time and date works best for them. So that way you're not stuck with the whole, when are you free? Oh, when are you free? I'm not free on this day. Well, I'm free on this day. <laughs> you didn't have like 45 emails before you even get anything scheduled. So this one eliminates all of that in the middle and um, you're able to, and it sends you an email and it says, Hey, you have a new appointment. And it also keeps a repository of all your clients and their information. Okay. So if you want to reach back out to them, if it didn't work and you want to send them an email or just keep them in a database, then it does that as well. So that's a, a tool slash service that I really like. You have any? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm no good on this one, guys. I will also, I, I don't know her business specifically. That's why I'm like kind of stuck. Yeah. I just don't have anything. Sorry. I'm sorry, girl. Uh, respond to us again with what you mean, like what exactly you're going to be doing, and yeah, I can better answer that. But Acuity is definitely a good one. MailChimp, of course, is a great one. I think that. I love MailChimp. You can automate things. A lot of people don't know how to use it. I think that's the first problem. But um, love MailChimp. definitely get a MailChimp account, which is basically a online email system. So kind of like Constant Contact is for like older mm -hmm. people. MailChimp is for like young uh, entrepreneurs. So MailChimp is another one. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that freebies, I... Freebies. Like start putting freebies out there, I guess, to whatever. It's hard because I don't know what she's doing. So I can't really say what type of freebie she could give. To yeah. Start building her subscriber. You know, have people actually interested in knowing right. what it is that she's going to be producing. Yeah. Um, I would say also all businesses need a sales funnel. So really um, start looking at different funnel systems. ClickFunnels is one. I'm trying to think of another one. Um, there's also ways around it if you want to, if you don't want to invest in something like ClickFunnels. And I don't think that's something you should invest in in the beginning anyway. I think you should just focus more on building your sales funnel so that you know what you're, when you're, where your money's coming from and what marketing strategies you need to attach to it mm -hmm. to ensure that you are making those sales. But yeah, so respond to us with in a little bit more detail so that we can answer that a little bit better. And then she also said, is business coaching necessary? Now, um, I've been through a coaching program and I also offer a coaching program. And to be honest with you, I think that business coaching 
catapulted me into where I am now as a business owner. I'm able to learn from uh, someone else's mistakes that's at a level that I was I was trying to be at. Mm -hmm. And they're able to give me a very clear blueprint that's customizable to what I'm doing. And I think something I even hear with the program that I offer, I mean, talking to people, sometimes they're like, well, people want to use all the free resources all over the internet. And that's fine, but you're just going to have all this stuff that you don't know what to do with. Yeah, I've never been through a business coach. Um, but from what Tatum has told me, they seem beneficial. Yeah. I was like, so I would agree. Um, and even like you may not be a client of mine, but in us having conversations and um, talking about business and talking about what you currently offer, what could be changed or what you can add to it. I think that, uh, well, you tell me, how has it worked? I'm going to speak for you. <laughs> and us just unofficially talking and working together about business. Um, That's what the next point I was going to make. I haven't actually had a full business coach, but having somebody that's been through a business coach and having someone that can lend great advice um, has been beneficial. And Tatum and I just like my business bestie. <laughs> so we talk all the time about business. So it has helped. So even if you don't want to go through a business coach, right. but you have like a business bestie, that's somebody, you know, that's a little bit more skilled and a little bit, you know, on the, cause I do PR Tatum's good with marketing. So, right. and that's another thing. Do not come to me asking for marketing. I'm a publicist, <laughs> no, I'm not a marketer. Don't ask me. There are different things. There are different things. So, you know, that's the, the great part about it. Cause granted, I mean, I'm not going to say, Oh, I'm horrible at marketing, but that's not my focus. So I don't really put too much effort into that part so you know relying on Tatum, that part <laughs> that part <laughs> that way um Tatum is definitely you know perfect when it comes down to talking about you know where to go next or how to take this and make it into you know a bomb marketing strategy or something so yeah find somebody that you can relate to and you don't gotta pay that much money y'all can just have a good conversation and bounce off each other yeah um I I think that's cool but I guess I, my perspective is just different to me it was because we in my program, it just was beneficial for me. And that, and that's a lot of what I based what I do in the Queen and group off of, because it's just different where not only do you have the ideas, not only do you have the advice, you have actionable steps and a clear blueprint. So yeah, I'll give you an idea or I'll tell you how you can, um, multiply your revenue streams or how you can develop a marketing strategy that supports your revenue streams. But I can also tell you exactly what to do to implement that marketing strategy, what tools you need, how you need to do it, what that looks like, like really breaking everything down to A, B, C, D, one plus one equals two. Mm -hmm. I think that that eliminates a lot of the learning curve. And again, it's a hundred percent customizable to you and your business. And so, and it's also that relationship and that accountability. We all need account accountability partners. And me personally, if I can get all that in one place without having to talk to 50 11 people just to get everything that I need, then that's the option I'm going to go with. But you should really, uh, that's, I wouldn't say business coaching is necessary because there are plenty of people who've been successful without having a business coach. And there are going to be plenty more people that are, that are going to be successful without having a business coach. Absolutely. So you really have to just think, what do you, what route do you want to take? Do you want to invest in a business coaching program or do you want to just figure things out um, for yourself and just see where you go from there? It's, it's 100% up to you. So I'm just letting you know from my experience, it was extremely valuable for me. And, and I grew a lot as a, a business owner. I would never have knew how to become a full-time entrepreneur if I didn't go through that program. And so it's definitely something that I think um, you should really think about. And if you want to talk to me, I'm not even going to sit here and try to, sco to skew you to join in my program because I think that ultimately you have to make what's, what's the best decision for um, your company. And I want you to be successful and happy in whatever decisions that you make. So if you would like to talk to me more about the Queen and Group and the program, shoot, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram at uh, Tatum Tamia, T-A-T-U-M-T-E-M-I-A. Or you can send me an email. It's Tatum, T-A-T-U-M, at thequeenacademy.com. Um, and we can talk about that. But yeah, definitely take some time and really think of how great you are at the business aspect because we definitely don't want another Sophia Omoroso situation Hello. where you Thank don't you. know the business and then it, it, the business eventually ends up in a bad place. So 
Yes, follow back up with us for sure, because I definitely want to know more about what you do exactly so that we can give you some specific advice. The next question comes from Alyssa or Alisa, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, Mursky. She said, what are cost effective ways to hire people to build your online presence aside from using Fiverr and people per hour? Fiverr, that's the uh, logo website, right? That she's talking about. Um, it's not just a logo website. It's just a website for freelancers. So you can get like a virtual assistant if you need somebody to mm-hmm. go through your emails for you. Yeah, you can get oh. like a contract done. You can get like uh, some copy done for your website. Huh. Everything on Fiverr, girl. Really? I if mean, you want to pay somebody five dollars, five dollars, and be like, okay, for two hours, can you go through all my emails and tell me such and such? <laughs> what I would That's do it. Litty. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so kind of like the freelance thing. Uh, for me, I did with a graphic designer that has an inside. I made her a freelance employee, mm-hmm. and I had her contract set for a certain amount of months. Um, and the way she got paid was through clients. So when she did work for clients, she would get you know whatever she had, but we would add our you management fee in it, mm-hmm. and then I would get that money, and then she would get that, and then the work that she did for us, she would create it in packages. Right. So I would you know get a discount, of course. So that was kind of like my step for it. Um. So if you want to kind of take that route as using somebody, depending on what services you're seeking, um, and creating that type of deal with them outside of Fiverr and a virtual person assistant mm-hmm. for five dollars, and actually having somebody on a contract for like six months, then you know. That could work. I think that's a that's been effective for me with getting services. I would say uh, definitely interns. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, you also have to know how to build your online presence. So I think the most cost effective way, or I wouldn't even say it may not be the most cost effective, depending on what you're trying to accomplish or what your budget is. But I think the smartest way is to learn yourself some of the. Tr- the ways to build an online presence and then bring on interns and teach them so that they can do the manual work for you. But I, I, I just don't believe in you not knowing how to do everything. Cause if somebody <laughs> like, can't do it, how are you going to like, how's it going to get done if you can't do it? Yeah. Y'all, I'm no good this week. I'm just like, I guess, I, I guess cause we're so self, we've been so self taught. It's kind of like hard to mm-hmm. throw it out there. I, everything that's been online presence thus far, I've kind of, learned and I taught my interns to do so like say, right. if you want to get interns and teach them what you know but, but that's, you time, which is, that's time which which equals money so that's I don't know yeah I can't that's the best that I could give you and I think Fiverr she said aside from using Fiverr Fiverr probably is the most cost effective yeah, way like to describe, that is cost or efficient. Upwork which is another freelancer website because if if you hire like a consultant or something like that you gonna have to pay for that you got to pay for their You got to pay for their experience and their education and their time and what it is that they know. So if you're trying to really get things done, then you should definitely um, check out Fiverr. And I would just learn for myself, but that's just me. Yeah, just try to learn for yourself, sis, because you end up spending a lot of money um, using Fiverr every day Mm -hmm. (laughs) for two hours. Or even, like I said, contracting somebody on freelance. Um, It can be beneficial. Just think about it down the line. Like, if that's what you want to do, you want to, you know, for six months as a you know trial run to see if that six months works out maybe it may save you some money but yeah we'll ponder self-teach we'll po- say yeah we'll ponder and see if we have anything else later <laughs> so our last question comes from anonymous she said i'm moving to baltimore this summer and i would love to plan a black girl bosses meet up with you all i would love to attend the entrepreneur her brunch but i'm not in town oh no mm-hmm. i think it would be great to connect with like-minded individuals in the city any tips on it or advice on how i should approach this situation i I have event planning and decoration experience. I'm not doing it for the money. I just think it would be a great idea. Or she said, or is a meetup already being planned? Well, if you're not looking to make any money, um, I would definitely say looking into sponsors to sponsor this event, um, mm-hmm. like food sponsors and stuff. So that way you're not just putting out money and not really getting anything back. And of course, if people or black owned businesses here that you're doing a meetup, you know, it's a chance to get their name out there and their business out. Um, 
they'll probably be more than willing to donate their services or products for free just so you can have this meetup. I don't think there's anything in this area called a Black Girl Waltz's meetup. But She's talking about doing it with us. Oh. Well, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, I, I don't think there's anything. But yeah, I'm saying, like, as far as on her behalf, like, what oh, can okay. she do? Yeah, so I'm looking at sponsors and stuff. Um, We can bring the people out. <laughs> we can help um, with the sponsorship, though, too. That's clearly my specialty, mm-hmm. what I love doing. So, yeah, that sounds dope. I like it. Yeah, we don't have a um a meetup specifically planned. I mean, we have some things that we're discussing that we would like to do in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, send us an email. Let us think about it. Figure out how it would make sense for all parties involved and stuff like that. Because um, I know Milan and I both have some pretty strong business goals right now. So we just want to make sure we're not pulling a Sophia Amoroso and <laughs> doing so much that right. we're not focusing on the goal of growing our businesses. So let us think about it. Send us an email um, in more detail. But, I mean, we love bringing women together. So I'm yeah. sure we'll do it. But we just have to figure out, like, the logistics of how it will work and how we can turn this into a great... Um, and make it something cute, too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, send us an email with your ideas, what you, what you want to do there. Like, tell us as much as you know. Give us, every, give us all your ideas. And mm-hmm. it'll make it easier for us to just be like, yeah, let's do it. Let's, you know, make this a Black Girl Boss podcast event. So, yeah, reach out to us. We can definitely talk about that. Let us know. Yes. So that's it for the questions, guys. If Again, if you want to submit a question for us to answer, send us a message on Instagram at Black Girl Bosses, and we'll be right back with the wins. And we're back with the wins of the week. If you guys want to submit a win, same, hit us up on the gram at Black Girl Bosses. <laughs> so the first win comes from one of our faves, Connecting Curl Friends. We reached 1,000 followers this week. We sold 20 tickets to the Blast from the Past 90s themed pizza and game night. And the event is still two weeks away. Hashtag Connecting Curl Friends. Yes. We still don't have an invitation, but it's cool. Congratulations. <laughs> We're proud of you. The next one comes from at Vows. Got the keys to my new apartment this weekend. Yes. I got the keys, the keys, the keys. I got the keys, the keys, the keys. The next one comes from our favorite twins at Goose by Twins. We have released our planners to the public, even when our crowdfunding Kickstarter failed. Yes. That's what's up. That's what it's all about, man. If so, if you get knocked down, you just make it happen anyway. That's what entrepreneurship is about. The next one comes from at Hey Miss Clark. My line sister and I have launched and publicized our book club at Books by Brunch. We had our first meeting Saturday and it was great. Hashtag Black Girl Book Gang. <laughs> yes. Yes. And shout out to her line sister with following up by saying the mission of Books and Brunch (laughs) is to celebrate our history and culture while learning more about who we are as a people through books. We plan to bring exposure to books written by black authors, specifically black women, books by us, excuse me, book for us, by us. Shout out to FUBU again. (laughs) Our goal is to bring young millennial women together to empower, embrace, and spread black girl magic. At Books by Brunch, inspiring minds one book at a time. Shout out to you guys. That's awesome. And I told y'all I'm a bookworm. So can y'all come out here with that? Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) And the last one is by My Oh My Mary. And I landed a celebrity client for a custom design. Y'all so awesome, man. Shout out to all this black girl magic that just got sprinkled <laughs> in right now. That is oh, so cool. Seriously. Tatum, I'm gonna, I want you to go first this time because I seem to mess up your yeses when it gets to Oh, you, you do. So I want to give you... I don't take it personally, though. I want to make sure your yeses get through. Actually, no. It was like episode seven or eight. I did come through with the yeses. Oh, only four weeks ago. Look <laughs> 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 my credit. I was doing good that day. So, um... I didn't even really write any down, to be honest. I had a good week. I had some great discovery calls, talked to some great um, 
business women. So I'm just excited. You know, it was it was a good week. I can't think of anything specific to really highlight, but I had a good week. Oh, my bae came back in the country. He was gone yes. for like. <laughs> He's going to go off when he hears this. He listens to the podcast. He's going to be like, hey, yes, hey. I got my little shout out for hey. once. <laughs> so shout out to my boo. He hey, was, hey, babe. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Croatia for three weeks wow. for work. He missed my birthday, Valentine's Day, but he did a great job making it seem like, you know, everything was the same and didn't miss a beat. So shout out to him for just being such an awesome person. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. They don't know why I'm saying it like that too. Uh, okay, and that's <laughs> it for mine. <laughs> We're gonna ping this to Milan before she tells my whole, all my business. I'm not telling business. I'm not spilling tea. <laughs> um, this week I well last week I finished my class. So woo, thank yes. you, Jesus. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Look. Yes. Yes. If you guys listen to the last couple episodes, you kind of know that that class was weighing me down i was over it so that was the first thing um i got two new clients yeah and they are on the newer rates yeah <laughs> the newer rates Cha-ching. Cha-ching. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. and even more um i was able to release some bad energy Uh-oh. that i was um you know the bad energy that mm-hmm. i was haltering around i was able to release that and and not even you know not even pay it any attention after that you know the bad and you're trying to find a light back in your life oh you okay because no at mind. first i'm like what you talking yeah, about you gotta okay. no mind. so i was able to release bad energy out of my circle yes so i feel so so much better about that and i am um taking a trip this week so oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm taking a trip, so that's the win for me. <laughs> Little do y'all know. Yes, yes, and that's my wins for the week. Yay. Okay, guys. Um, oh, shout out to my friend Brandon. I said I was going to shout him out. His birthday is today. He, Happy birthday. He's one of our black boy bosses. Hey, black boy boss. Happy <laughs> birthday. Happy 25th birthday, B. Um, but yeah, guys. Earlier in this episode, we said this is episode 11, (laughs) but we lied. This is episode 10. (laughs) So shout out to that blooper. Um, So, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into the podcast. Again, we love you guys so much. Y'all are the best. So we can't wait to holler at y'all next week. Bye.